Charlie Hebdo has released its first cover after two shooters went into their headquarters or their offices and shot and killed um, many people, 12 people. Now, uh, their cover is just as controversial as their past covers, and it shows you just how brave they are in releasing these types of images. The newspaper said that it'll actually print over one million copies of this cover this week. Typically, they do about 60,000 uh, prints per issue, and they're getting help from big companies like Google and other organizations in order to do so, in order to fund this. You know, it's an interesting thing. I mean, I had read it previously that it was only 30,000 uh, that they would uh, print. Now it's 60,000. It's a very, very small number. Yeah. It's fascinating, and I'm not taking anything away from them. I, you know, I couldn't be a bigger supporter of them. It's just, it's fascinating what people decide to obsess over. Yeah. It's, it's not like uh, Charlie Hebdo was, you know, just changing the culture of France and Europe and dominating, and they're like the dominant media outlet in France and they're making fun of the Prophet Muhammad and they had to be, no, it's a small little cartoon, great, bless right. their hearts. And then no, but the fundamentalists got obsessed with them and then yeah. these killers come and kill them. Uh, and now, uh, the great irony of it is, they're so much larger than they ever were. They've, so yeah. of course, again, fundamentalists being idiots and being counterproductive. Now more people have seen these cartoons than they ever would have if they weren't attacked. Absolutely. I mean. It I mean, look, this was a tragedy, there's no question about it, but these terrorists essentially did a, a service in marketing the, this paper and now, or this cartoon, and now everyone's talking about it, everyone knows about it, and it, you know, they've suffered multiple attacks. In 2011, they were firebombed as a result of some of the images that they're putting out of the Prophet Muhammad. Now, uh, what's interesting is, as you guys know, a number of prominent leaders have come together, a bunch of public figures have come together in support of the cartoon, and there is one cartoonist that works at Charlie Hebdo, Hebdo that does not like it. In fact, he thinks that it's a little hypocritical for them to show their support now after they've been so hateful toward the cartoonists in the past. So Bernard Holtrop says the following. We vomit on all these people who suddenly say they are our friends. It really makes me laugh. A few years ago, thousands of people took to the streets in Pakistan to demonstrate against the paper. They didn't know what it was. Now it's the opposite. So that's making the point that I was, yeah. which is that uh, now they've ironically given them all, the, all this coverage. Uh, uh, but the, his earlier comment is a more interesting one, where yeah. he's saying, look, all these people that now you tell me you support me, but you didn't support me before. When I made fun of the Vatican, you didn't support me. You know, when we were against all different religions and we were, you know, diehard secularists, a lot of people didn't support us, right? right? So now that we, a couple of our friends got killed, he says, now all of a sudden you turn around and you pretend you're on our side. And that's why he says I vomit on those people, which is a strong comment. But Charlie Hebdo has been very, very strong throughout. Well, a lot of world leaders will join together in their hatred toward Muslims. Let's keep it real. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, when it comes to something like that, look, in this case, it was such a violation of the freedom of expression and free speech. So no matter what your ideology yeah. is, I can understand why people would come together and say, look, even though we don't agree with these cartoons, and I can understand people who don't agree with these cartoons, you still want to support or protect the right to put this type of content out there, mm -hmm. right? So Now, the, the irony is that the, some of those leaders did not support those rights mm -hmm. earlier, right? Yes, and uh, we're going to get to that. To the degree that. that they should have. But I agree with you that, of course, what the real reason the leaders showed up there was to um, celebrate freedom of expression, yeah. not necessarily this particular cartoon or publication. Right? right. Now, having said that, there's some good reason to doubt their support of freedom of expression in the first place. Exactly. Now, uh, Bernard did point out to very specific prominent figures in, you know, basically pointing out their hypocrisy. He talked about Pope Francis, Queen Elizabeth, Vladimir Putin. Now, it, it was great that he called these people out, but there was another less known individual uh, who also called them out, a guy by the name of Daniel Wickham. And he was like, oh, it's interesting that all of these world leaders got together for this unity march in support of the freedom of expression because they've been trying to destroy freedom of expression in their own countries. So let me give you some examples of the tweets he put out there. And of course, they did get, go viral. Thousands of people retweeted them and favorited them. King Abdullah of Jordan, which last year sentenced a Palestinian journalist to 15 years in prison with hard labor. And then he includes a link. 
Prime Minister of Turkey, Cenk, please pronounce his name. Ahmet Davutoğlu. All right. Who imprisons more journalists than any other country in the world. Includes a Guardian article on that. Prime Minister Netanyahu of Israel, whose forces killed seven journalists in Gaza last year, second highest after Syria. Foreign Minister of Egypt, which, as well as Al Jazeera staff, has detained journalists uh, for around 500 days. A journalist for around 500 days. Shout Foreign Minister. Is a journalist there. And I like how this guy's equal opportunity going after everybody. Everyone. Foreign Minister. Uh, Lavrov of Russia, which last year jailed a journalist for insulting a government servant. Wow, that does sound like a serious charge. Foreign Minister uh, Lamamra of Algeria, which has detained journalist uh, Abdesami Abdullahi for 15 months without charge. The Foreign Minister of the UAE, which in 2013 held a journalist incommunicado for a month on suspicion of Muslim Brotherhood links. Prime Minister uh, Joma of Tunisia, which recently jailed blogger Yassine Ayan for three years for defaming the army. Hmm. I mean, he just keeps going. The Prime Ministers of Georgia and Bulgaria, both of whom have a record of attacking and beating journalists. The Attorney General of the United States, where police in Ferguson have recently detained and assaulted Washington Post reporters. So that's only 10 of the tweets that he put out there. I mean, he had dozens of tweets where he's pointing to world leaders who took part in that march and they have done their own damage in their own countries. They like freedom of the press when it's somebody they don't agree with attacking them, okay? Uh, but when it comes to freedom of the press attacking uh, th their actual governments, that they don't like as much, right? So if you're attacking Charlie Hebdo and Charla Hebdo's no skin off their ass. Well, then, yeah, they're for freedom of the press, right? Yep. Uh, but if you're attacking their beloved government servants and military, et cetera, with your freedom of the press, not as much in favor of it. So I don't mind that they marched. I like that they marched. Yeah. I'd li actually like them to carry out those principles when they go back home.